It was the 28th, 1225 p.m., and Melissa and I had decided today was the day we were going to the Alhambra. With some minor difficulties, we made it to the Alhambra around 1.30. We had no tickets to the place, and so we were unsure what we could do. Free. You have to buy tickets to this thing weeks in advance, like two or three or a month or... I don't know, but we, we didn't plan that far ahead. After we saw this wonderful view, we decided to head back up to where we started, and we saw this really cute cat under a bench. We thought perhaps we couldn't get into the Alhambra of any parts of it, so we decided to walk around what we could and found our way to the Puerta de Injustia, which is this giant door right here. Turns out we could enter, and we found this cute little palace. I'm not really sure what it is, but we climbed the stairs, and we found this great view of the city from the Alhambra. There were tons of tourists, and there was people waiting in line to get into this castle right here, but we got to do all of this for free. In the complex as well was Carlos V's Holy Palace. He was Holy Roman Emperor, King of Italy, Germany, and Spain. Now in the palace is the Fine Arts Museum and the Museum of the Alhambra, which were both free. We made our way out of the palace of Carlos V and made our way to this church. In case you didn't know, the Alhambra used to be Muslim, but the Spanish kicked out all Muslims in 1492. Some of the shops on the street of the Alhambra were selling chessboards, which was really cool because one of the main things in the Museum of the Alhambra was an ancient chessboard, about 500 years old, that they recovered. We also got to see this old part of the Alhambra that's been uncovered. On our way out, we saw this cute little car, and we left around 4.30, so we got three hours of entertainment from this stop. We didn't pay a single dime, and I'm sure that if you did, you'd get a lot more enjoyment from it. Here is our hotel, and that was the end of the Alhambra day. We didn't have a ton planned for the next day, but we did end up seeing the Palisade de los Congreses y the Ermita de San Sebastián, which I would suggest you look up if you don't know the story. After these two landmarks, we ended up at the Parque de las Ciencias, which if you can't tell, just means the Park of Sciences. We ended up in this really cute butterfly garden. After the butterfly garden, we ended up checking out some of the other exhibits, like this olive oil one. This right here is where they milk the olives. After the milking of the olives, we checked out the Biodomo, which is like kind of an aquarium, kind of a zoo, kind of something in between. At 1.52, Melissa made this killer joke. We moved on to the rest of the aquarium, and then it was time for the zoo portion. If you can't tell, this portion is more or less open air. We literally could have touched these lemurs, like there's almost nothing separating us from them. There are also a bunch of tropical birds out and about, but let's not forget about these adorable otters. By 2.09, Melissa and I had to make our way through the biodome. After making our way through the exhibit, we played a game of chess, and Melissa beat me. After many stops and water breaks, because it was like literally 105 degrees Fahrenheit, we made our way to Parque de Garcia Lorca. It had his house, some trees, some flowers, it was all just really beautiful. It was the final thing we did in Granada. Something much less glamorous about this trip to Granada was what we ate. We decided to eat literally only one slice of turkey, one slice of cheese, half a slice of ham for every sandwich that we made and we ate nothing but sandwiches for like seven of the eight meals we were there because we spent so much money in madrid with ellie which i talked about in a previous vlog that we didn't have a ton to spend while in granada and we wanted to avoid spending 20 euros every single time we went out so we splurged on the final night ate double decker sandwiches with all the ham and cheese that we had left and oh my gosh, it was it was great. It was so rewarding after rationing ourselves for the entire week. At 5.45, we arrived to the train station of Granada, which was a bit early because it doesn't even open till 6. But our train was leaving at 7.10, and we wanted to make sure that we weren't going to miss it. Public transport is not available until 6 a.m., and the first bus would not have arrived to our hotel until like 6.35, and we would have arrived to 
this train station at like 705 so we would have really been pushing it um, so we decided to take a taxi early in the morning just to make sure that we would have gotten there safely on time and we did everything was fine we made it back home safely to madrid perfectly fine and then alcala and it was a great experience and uh yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this vlog um that's it for this one see you guys next time